we are attempting to cover a very big topic in today's video, and that is how to choose the right planner or the right planning tool for you. This is part two of my planning series. If you missed part one, go back and watch that because that will take you on a 20 year journey of using all sorts of different planners and planning tools. It's just really fun to see how my own personal planning has evolved over time. In this video though, we are gonna dive into the nitty gritty of what's even out there that you can choose to use as your planner, and also what are your planning preferences. There's some things and questions I wanna ask that are gonna make you think through what's gonna work for you and what you can definitely leave behind. Because I know firsthand how difficult it is to commit to a tool that you want to use to keep your entire life together, to stay on top of your goals, on top of your schedule, on top of your to-dos. So I'm gonna do the best I can to help narrow your focus so you can be confident about what you're going to pick up and try next. First of all, what type of planners are out there or the types of tools you could use even digitally as your planner? You've got the traditional planner. I mean, that is a given. These are the planners that have the monthly and weekly layout paired together, or sometimes it's a monthly and a daily, but you're used to seeing these like at Erin Condren, Simplified, Day Designer, Ashley Shelley. Traditional planners are really for those who are craving simplicity and minimalism in their planner. They're really focused on just the basic essentials and want to get things done rather than planning to get things done. Then we have a subset of the traditional planner market and that is specialty planners. So these also help you plan your month, week, and day, but they bring in productivity assessments and monthly reviews and goal setting pages and a process for you to go through. So they're like a traditional planner, but a little bit extra on top of that. Specialty planners are for those who are really looking for more of an all-in-one tool to keep them on track. So they're really conscious about how their daily actions are aligned with their long-term goals, and they like that consistent reminder throughout their planner to keep on track. Some popular specialty planners that you may have seen out on the market are Cultivate What Matters Power Sheets, Moxie Life Goal Planners, the Full Focus Planner, which is a quarterly system to track your goals. And then you've got a company like Plum Paper where you can actually customize different sections of your planner to track whatever it is you want to track. The next few tools that I'm gonna talk about are considered in the Franken planning market. If you've never heard that term before, Franken planning is basically taking a lot of different tools and strategies and sections from maybe a variety of sources or planners and combining them into one tool, kind of like the classic book, Frankenstein. The most popular Franken planner that you've probably heard of is the bullet journal. And I have probably more than any other type of planning tool used the bullet journal the longest. It is simply a blank notebook with an index in the front, pages are numbered, and you can customize and draw any layout that you want inside. So basically you are creating your own planner in a notebook. It can become a calendar, to-do list, goal planner, memory keeper, note taker, all in one. These are best for people who really crave that flexibility in their planner. They wanna know that every page has a purpose and is aligned exactly with how their brain thinks in terms of their planning process. Traveler's Notebooks are another flexible planning system. And I used, I did not bring this up in my last video, but I was remembering as I was working on this one that I did use a Traveler's Notebook for probably about five, six months. So this is usually a leather or vegan leather cover that has an elastic strap down the middle. And it's where you can combine multiple thin notebooks into one portable tool. So this is for people who really want to categorize different parts of their life life like work and home or notes and calendar or however you want to separate it because you can have a separate notebook for each in one portable tool. The last system in this Franken planner section are disbound and ring bound notebooks. If you're not familiar with the disbound notebook, it has a front and back cover held together by dis. A ring bound notebook, I do not have, but it's similar to a three ring binder where you've got the cover and then inside are those three rings or actually six rings for more the planner size. Usually the A5 size is the most popular ring planner that's out there. And you can add 
all sorts of different planning inserts and pages to customize your own planner. So you could get printables from a variety of online sources and it allows you to easily add and remove and rearrange pages as needed. So this is for people who really want a flexible system. They're really concerned about every page again being exactly the way they want it and if you're feeling really creative you can even design your own pages to put inside your planner. Ringbound systems that I have seen have been through Erin Condren and Day Designer and then for disbound systems you have Jane's Agenda, Lavender Circa, Arc by Staples, TUL. I feel like there's one more that I'm forgetting. Oh, Inkwell Press also has disbound notebooks. Now we're moving on to the last major section of planners and planning tools, and that is the digital tool market. And whew, there is a lot. So I've split these into a few different categories. So we've got to-do list apps. So you've got Tick Tick, Todoist, Things, Google Tasks, and AnyDo. Calendars, of course, you have Google Calendar and Apple Calendar and Calendly. We also have note-taking apps. You've probably heard of Evernote. And then there's Obsidian and OneNote. If you want to incorporate a habit tracker into your planning lineup, there's Streaks, which is one of my favorites. Before I actually moved my habit tracker into Notion, I'll link a video on how to build a habit tracker in Notion below, so you can check that out. But there's also Habitify and Habit Now. And then for massive project management and you basically want this digital tool to completely organize your entire life, you have Notion, of course, which is one of my favorites. You also have Asana, ClickUp, and I believe Hive.com and Monday.com are other alternatives as well. Oh, and Trello. I completely forgot Trello because I did have an era where I used Trello. Digital tools are really best for people who want portability, synchronization, collaboration, and automation. So these are the tools that you want if you're working on a team. You also have automation in terms of recurring tasks. So you don't need to write down your tasks every single day or week the same things that you're gonna do, like clean the bathroom or wash the dishes or fold the laundry. And if you like using digital tools, you probably enjoy the portability and minimal nature of those tools. And the fact that all you need is a computer, iPad, or phone, and it syncs between all three. The great thing about all of these planning tools and systems that I have mentioned is you do not need to exclusively use one or the other. You can combine certain tools to create your perfect productivity portfolio, that's the good word for it, productivity portfolio of maybe some digital tools that do things better than maybe a traditional planner would, but you still love the concept of a traditional planner, so you want to incorporate that as well, or maybe include a bullet journal. It's really up to you, but having all those decisions and trying to figure out which one or which combination of tools is going to be best for you is really difficult. Like I am strong, I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do for 2024. And I've narrowed it down to a few items I'll be sure to share once I have that all figured out. But it is a difficult thing to commit to something. I mean, you always know that you can change. But it's still just taking that initial step. It's very hard. So here's what's going to help. First, I want you to assess the current tools that you're using. So get out a piece of paper or download the Find Your Match freebie planning guide that I have for you that I will link below. And this is gonna take you through the tools that you're already using and asking you, what do you really like about it? What feels natural? What feels good? How is it helping you stay on top of things? And then moving into the negative side, what about this tool feels like there's a lot of friction points with it? It feels uncomfortable. It's not working right. You're not staying on top of something like you thought you would, or the layout feels cramped, or it feels too open, or you're talking and there's this fly running around. We'll just get right back into it. Or maybe there are sections of your planner that you just simply don't use. Taking stock about how you feel about each of your planning tools that you're using right now is really going to help you in the next section figure out what your planning preferences are. And I know it's really tempting to like think through this and do it in your head, but write this down on paper if you can, because when you're shopping for a new tool or reading reviews or looking at blog posts of other people using those tools, then you can have that paper right there and you can be like, oh yeah. This is what I didn't like. And this one has that thing that I didn't like. So 
it should be completely mixed. Now we're gonna move on to what are your preferences for a planning tool? What are your planning preferences? Planning is an extremely personal decision. Our brains do not work the same. We also find ourselves in completely different seasons of life. You might have young kids or be a college student or be an empty nester or you're starting a side business at home or you're starting a new job or you're going back to college. Like every single one of us is gonna have different needs when it comes to a planning tool. And I guess that's a good thing that there are so many options out there for us, but again, it can be really overwhelming. So let's narrow it down to what your planning preferences are. And here's what I want you to think about when you're looking at the tools that are out there. First of all, how much upkeep can you handle? If you are in a really busy season of life, I probably would not recommend a bullet journal. I might not even recommend a disbound or ring notebook unless you bought inserts for a whole year to put in it yourself. Instead, I would probably direct you towards more of a traditional planner route. You just need to focus on your schedule, on your to-dos, getting things done. The next question I want you to think about is does portability matter? So if you like having your planning tool on the go, whether it's paper or digital, if it's paper, you're gonna want to definitely pick something a little bit smaller. Like I would say even a junior half letter size pocket or personal, which is even smaller than that. Or if you're a digital planner, then hey, that's great. You can take your planning tool wherever your phone is. If you like your planner sitting on your desk, then you can feel free to go for the big day designer or the big Erin Condren. These are seven inch by nine inch planners that are really big, have a lot of pages, and are probably not something you want to stick in your bag when you're running errands. Some people like to have a desk planner and a portable planner. And if you decide that's gonna be best for you, I would just suggest that you have some sort of routine implemented that is going to help you transfer whatever you put down in your portable planner to your desk planner if you're working out of both. Just so you're not referencing different things in one planner or wait, maybe it's in that one. I'm not sure where I put it. Just make sure that you have some sort of routine where you're consistently moving the information in one planner to another so you're only working out of one main planner. Another question, do you like a lot of rigid structure or do you want more flexibility? If you like these planners that just tell you exactly what to do, exactly what to track, so the day designer in particular on the damn page, I believe they have so many sections for like meal and budget, Maybe there's like a habit tracker on every single weekly layout that you really love. Maybe you like at the beginning of the month, it just saying, what are your to do's for the month? What are your memories that you had this month? What is like the takeaway that you had from this month? So if you really want a planner to tell you what to do, then you're gonna wanna stick with a traditional or specialty planner. If you want to be more flexible and you like to change things up often and you don't wanna buy three or four different planners a year for when you get bored and need to move on to something different, then you probably wanna consider the bullet journal or a traveler's notebook or the disbound and ring system or even Notion, again, where you're building your basically productivity workflow and organization hub yourself. This is a big one. How do you like to visualize your tasks? Because if you've ever looked at traditional planning layouts, there's a lot to choose from. You have the horizontal layouts, you have the vertical hour by hours, you have vertical three boxes that are very popular in the Erin Condren notebooks. You have where it's just a day on a page and you have the hour by hour schedule next to a column of all your tasks. So how do you like to visualize your tasks? Are you someone who needs to time block? You need to know exactly when you're gonna do something or does that feel too rigid and stifling for you? And so you need to maybe just work off a list of tasks. There's no specific time block where you need to complete those tasks. It's just, here's what I have to do today. And if that were the case, then a simple weekly horizontal layout in a traditional planner would work great. If you use a bullet journal, then just a heading at the top of the page, Monday, October 9th, 2003, whatever year it is, and then just a list of tasks underneath that you need to complete. So think about how you like to visualize your tasks. This next question I kind of covered already, but do you change planning systems often? And if so, you may want to go with, again, the bullet journal or the disbound or ring bound notebook. 
it can be very, very expensive to buy multiple planners a year. So I would say if you're changing planners more than two times, because I think for a lot of us, I mean, maybe if, they're, if, they're, if you're out there and you do not change planners, if like what you choose in January, you stick through the entire year, please comment because I like kudos to you because I and many other people do not do that. I wish I did. I really wish I did. But if you are choosing a different planner more than twice a year, you're probably going to spend more money switching around to different planners than if you purchased all the supplies to do a disbound or ring bound system yourself. So those systems, I should have mentioned this before, are a little bit more pricey to start. But long term, it's going to pay off for you if you like changing your layouts often. And the last question, and this is for paper planners only, is does binding matter to you? Because some people absolutely hate the disc. But you also have coil bound planners, you have these hard bound notebooks, you also have soft bound notebooks. So you really have to think about the binding and what you prefer writing in and what is the most comfortable for you. Again, my find your match planning guide is going to be really helpful to help you figure out all your preferences. I have a little mini quiz in there that based on your answers, it's going to point you in a certain direction. And once you've narrowed down your search to the few that you want to research a little bit more, then you know exactly where to direct your focus. You can go look up YouTube videos for that specific planner. I just did this. I was looking into the Staology, I can't, I don't know if I'm saying it right, the Staology notebook versus the Hobonichi planner. And when I was considering maybe moving to Hobonichi, I thought, oh, I'll definitely get the Hobonichi cousin. That is what everyone is talking about. Well, watching that video made me realize that no, I think if I get a Hobonichi, I don't want the cousin, I need the original. I probably am not even gonna go with a Hobonichi. I might go to the Staology. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. But the point is knowing what your preferences are based on what planners you should actually look at. Then you can see reviews, you can read blog posts, you can look on Instagram for users who are using those exact type of planners and tools. And it's going to help you figure out even more if that's the right direction. As we wrap up here, I have something that I need to tell you that you may not want to hear, but I'm going to say it anyway. All planning tools, whether they are digital or paper, require effort. They are not going to be this magical fairy godmother that is going to make you into this productivity powerhouse. You actually have to use them. You need to have a planning routine. You need to open it often, reference it often, actually use your tool to be able to get the results from it. And I truly believe even though there are different tools that probably will work for you better than another, I think we spend so much time trying to find planner peace, trying to get this perfect layout, when really a lot of the tools that are out there are going to work as long as we use it. You may decide on a planner stack or digital combo that after a week you're starting to regret and you're frantically panic trying to find something new. I want you to give it at least three months. I think that is the perfect amount of time to be able to get used to a system, to understand how it works, to make tweaks to it so that it fits better into your lifestyle. So if there is something that doesn't feel like the right fit off the bat, give it three months. And if after three months you don't have the hang of it, you're still frustrated, it's still not working for you, then clearly you need to move on to something new. The most important thing is that you are using some sort of tool to help keep you on track. And as long as you have something that is helping you do that, then you're winning. I love chatting with you in the comments. So before you leave this video, let me know what tools you have been using, what tools you're thinking about for next year. I'd love to help you decide if you need some direction on where to go. And don't forget to download my Find Your Match Planning Guide. It's completely free and it's gonna take you through a lot of the questions that we talked about today to help you find the planner or planning tool that you want to use.
If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, click subscribe if you haven't already, and watch this next video if you missed a part one of this two-part planning series. It is all about my planning eras and the different tools that I have used and peeks into all of those tools. I really think you will find it fascinating and it might give you more ideas on what you may want to use in the future. I'll see you guys in the next video.